I think the biggest um, benefit I've had from listening to my father's band play and my mother's and my mother sang uh, since I was little until now is the amount of different music that I've spent my life listening to. My father had a very eclectic record collection from Stravinsky to Elvis Presley. And so I grew up with a very, very, a varied taste in music that's uh, been with me ever since uh, I started. But it's all been acoustic-based, really. I would not be the person that would be hired for a hip-hop record if it's live music, live players, everybody in the room playing at the same time. Uh, I would, you know, raise my hand for anything like that. And I think that for uh, younger people wanting a career in this business, I think that's the best advice I could give someone is to spend time just listening to music, uh, not, uh, not turn it up to 11, you know, so it shakes the trunk of your car, but really listen to what somebody's trying to do with it, how they construct their tracks. Uh, listen to music that you don't even like. You know, I uh, listen to a podcast that plays all different kinds of music, and I would never buy Clash records, but there's a snare sound in a Clash record that I want to emulate the next time I do a rock band. Um, it's really helpful, I think, to have a wide, varied taste in, in music and to listen to new things all the time, even if it's kind of the kind of music you could never see yourself doing, because you can always learn something from it. For uh, engineers that are just starting out, uh, I also think it's really important to have a conversation with the person whose record you're going to be recording, whether it be the producer or the composer or the artist, kind of what their vision is about, uh, what their expectation is about the sound that they want. Uh, on every project that I do, I have a conversation with the composer uh, or the artist about what it is they want, and in many times that informs the, the choice of microphones that I use and where the placement in the room is of uh, different people. And so that, that really informs the whole way the session is going to go. The more information I can have at the beginning of, uh, of a date, the better the session will go, the less I have to scramble around. Recording with a large orchestra is um, a very expensive thing. And the more we can do to make that process painless for everyone, so they can just walk in, we press record, and we go. That's the best way forward. You can see when I talked about the how, how we can change the sound of the room, uh, that the, each of the cement pillars has a panel that comes out that makes the sound of the room more dead. But th that can be done uh, incrementally to change the sound from very live to very dead, which is uh, what it is now. Uh, the diffusers in the back are, um, uh, were invented by some mad German scientist. And George Massenberg used to do a lot of work here with Linda Ronstadt before my time. And actually, uh, he had those uh, built and brought in. And uh, we use those quite often. We were doing a harp uh, overdub uh, yesterday for a uh, harp and tango record. Uh, we did the orchestra for it uh, quite a while ago, and we've been doing the, the harp overdub for it. You know, I'm really lucky to have worked in great studios with great mic collections, but one of the main microphone collections that's in all those studios happens to be Neumann microphones. So I kind of grew up being able to use a lot of great Neumann tube bikes, and um, it just kind of became my go-to in a lot of cases. I mean, you can even see here for the room mics, uh, for the orchestra, and then for the harp overdub, those are Neumann M50s, wonderful uh, tube mics, Neumann KM84s uh, on the harp, and I use a lot of uh, Sennheisers as well on uh, orchestra dates, on strings, uh, and uh, brass. You know, we have certainly a great mic collection here, and I have loads uh, of other choices. I just bought um, DPA microphones because I, we do a lot of chorus work here, and there's a, a producer, Blatton Alspa, who's a 
wonderful producer, wins lots of Grammys for being classical producer of the year. And every time I hear his stuff, his chorus always sounds great. And I asked him one day what, what microphones he used, and they were DPA. So I got those, and Dan just used them on a recording session for a chorus, and they sound great. It might be a microphone that would have, it, I would pull out just for chorus. Now, it might be a great mic for other things, but it would be become my go-to chorus mic. Whereas other mics tend to be, you might use them for um, different things. You know, they're more um, versatile. It's just, you know, whatever's the best tool for what it is we're doing, it just so happens that most of those tools end up being Neumann and Sennheiser. So for this particular project, we used M50s because we had um, an orchestra. And uh, there are other microphones that I might use for room mics for a, a tree, which is what we call that, that would not be as large a diaphragm, but in many cases they would still be um, Neumann or Sennheiser. So if it was a smaller group, for instance, and um, you did need such a big, huge picture of what the group was, and it wasn't a very big sound, you might want to use a smaller diaphragm uh, condenser mic like uh, uh, Sennheiser MKH-800 because that gives a really beautiful sound as well. But it's a smaller diaphragm, great for um, a smaller group that might get a little overwhelmed by such a big uh, microphone as the M50. But the M50 takes a lot of level. It's uh, really lush sounding and gives a beautiful picture of the orchestra. The other thing I would uh, say to uh, young engineers just starting out that, uh, is that it's important to have a life outside the studio. You know, it's fine to work 24 seven and say yes to everything. And it's another thing to have a life that kind of informs what you do, whether that means having interests outside of music uh, or uh, having interests by joining organizations that uh, you can d devote some time to. I've been a lo longtime member, practically a lifetime member of the Recording Academy, the organization that gives out the Grammy Awards. And I joined when I first moved to San Francisco and became president of the San Francisco chapter and then a national trustee. And I was the first woman chair of the National Board of Trustees. I'm advisor to the Technology and Applied Composition Program at San Francisco Conservatory of Music. Uh, I'm a, a director of the board of GANG, the Game Audio Network Guild. So there are lots of ways to plug in to work with different people in uh, disparate um, areas of the business. It gives you a wonderful understanding of uh, other people's jobs and what they do, and the uh, we're really just a part of one huge group that's called the music community. And uh, to be able to understand people's points of view, I think it's made me a better engineer and a better producer by uh, remembering that it's not my name on the record, it's somebody else's. And uh, by learning to work with other people in the industry uh, in that way, it's helped out quite a bit.